Yep, tally ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts about our city and other places, actually. Uh, but today is a Jules Guide about London. So today we're going to be walking from Pimlico over towards Lambeth Bridge and Millbank. Behind me, that building there, you know, you see that? That's Peninsula Heights. That's the one where um, Geoffrey Archer lives. Right. Yeah, I think he lives in those two, the top ones with a big glass. Yeah, Geoffrey Archer, he was um, a famous politician here who ended yeah. up going to prison for perjury. But he's more famous for being a, a crime novelist as well. I think he wrote thrillers and stuff like that. I only met you last week and I have another thing. I'm tired and I can't sleep. Is it you are the ring a ding ding? ding is it you are the ring a ding ding? This is the Tate Britain not to be mistaken, the Tate Modern Art Gallery. Originally, this is where the Millbank Penitentiary stood in the 19th century. This is called Millbank um, after a mill which was near Westminster. You did philosophy, didn't you, at university yeah. with me? We, we were in the same philosophy, philosophy yeah. class. Yeah. There was this thing called a panopticon. It was uh, Jeremy Brett Bentham's idea about yeah. a prison which had, oh. like, it was shaped like a kind of... Uh, Circular, and then the guard arms. tower would be in the middle. That's right. Yeah, so it had a guard tower in the middle. The idea, idea being that it would only require one guard. One guard to oversee the whole lot. Yeah, they may not even need a, a guard. Because, because they... of the deterrent factor yeah. of not being able to see if anyone was in the guard. Tower. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so this was Jeremy Bentham's idea. Yeah. Um, although I think, to quote Jeremy Bentham, it was nonsense upon stilts. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the Millbank Penitentiary was a panopticon. It was a place for holding prisoners awaiting transportation to Australia. Eventually, they replaced it with Tate Britain. And uh, Tate is as in Henry Tate, who was a great philanthropist. Tate as in Tate and Lyle sugar. You know when you buy sugar cubes and they're, they're, they're made by Tate and Lyle? So this Henry Tate donated a load of his own paintings to be exhibited here in, uh, in Tate Britain. It's free, like a lot of the museums in London, and uh, there's quite a lot. If you like Turner, as I do, then uh, there's loads of Turner in there. It's really good. Yeah. Hello there. Hello. I was watching your clips before I came here. Oh, is, what? Are you a genuine fan? Oh, you've seen me. You know who he is? This, this, this is my that's me! Yeah! Hey! Hi! Yeah, <laughs> that's that's insane. Of course! Yeah. <laughs> nice so to meet much. you. No, nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. What's your name? Takeshi. Takeshi. I'm from Japan. See, ye of little faith. I do have fans after <laughs> all. I know you. Yeah, I know. He's a, fan. He's a genuine fan. This is the MI5 building. What's the difference between MI5 and MI6? Because uh, MI, one as of a... them's real, one of them isn't. No, MI5. Okay, what? Okay. The Mission, Mission Impossible Five was yeah. the one where he goes to China, isn't it? You're talking about Mission Impossible. Oh no, sorry. What? I was talking about MI5. <laughs> it's a completely different thing. Well, oh, Mission oh, Impossible oh, Five. That was very funny. Yeah, yeah. Very funny. So the building over there <laughs> was uh, MI6. That's James Bond's building. The one at MI6. That's all. Yeah. That's foreign stuff. Okay. And MI5 is home affairs. Right. The MIs went up to 19 originally. Really? I think, yeah, I think MI1 was code breaking. MI2 was Russia and Scandinavia. Three, I think, was Eastern Europe. And I think they all got sort of joined together into MI5 and MI6 in the end. This is called Horse Ferry Road. It's called Horse Ferry Road because this used to be a horse ferry in the 16th century in order to transport people from the Palace of Westminster over to Lambeth Palace, where the uh, Archbishops of Canterbury have famously lived since the 12th century. It was, in fact, if you had a horse and you wanted to get across the River Thames, this was the only place you could do it, other than walking across the London Bridge, of course. Are you like slightly out of breath on. from coming up the steps? A little bit, why? Yeah, no, I'm just pointing it out, that's it. It's pointing out my age. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I'm getting off. I'm frozen. You understand? That's actually what Mary of Modena used. She was the wife of King James II, and she had to escape after the revolution. So she escaped across this um, horse ferry here. Uh, disguised as a washerwoman. I think the horse ferry eventually closed down once they opened Westminster Bridge. Now this is Lambeth Bridge and the reason it's painted red is to match the seats in the House of Lords because 
Westminster Bridge over there is painted green to match the House of Commons. This is the one that's featured in the, the beginning of The Prisoner of Azkaban. He gets picked up by the night bus and it comes herring around this corner and it has to shrink in order to get between two double-decker buses. I don't know if you saw Fast and Furious 6. This is where they pretend it's Moscow. Yeah, <laughs> Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Johnson is walking along here. Right, and, then, and it's totally, I recognise those two buildings. They'd had all those kind of Kremlin type domes and stuff at the end of the bridge, but I definitely recognise those two buildings over there. You've probably heard me talk about this, uh, this church before in my video about Captain Bly, and also I visited it in Take Me to Pitcairn. But um, I just, uh, just as a quick recap, right. here's what I said then. Don't forget to come and visit the Garden Museum. It used to be called St. Mary at Lambeth. One of the reasons why I really like it here is because there's this thing called the peddler's window. A peddler is somebody who holds a peddler's certificate and goes from town to town selling his wares. And this particular peddler did pretty well for himself and he donated half an acre of land to the church, but only on the condition that they remember him and his dog here. See, that whole plot of land on which County Hall now stands used to be known as a peddler's acre. And if you go there now with your peddler's certificate, as I've tried, um, you get thrown off by the council. It's nice, isn't it? Where's the justice, eh? I'll have to come back on my own sometime to talk to them about the actual garden museum. My favourite thing is actually out in the garden. Yeah, have you seen the mutiny on the bounty? Yeah, yeah, this is where Captain Bly's buried. Look, this is his tomb. If you've ever seen the film The Bounty with Mel Gibson and Anthony Hopkins, you'll know all about the famous mutiny in the South Pacific. Captain Bly was very famous for being the commander of the infamous Bounty, and on their way back from Tahiti back in 1789, the crew, led by Fletcher Christian, mutinied and forced Bly and 18 loyal men into a lifeboat in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with only a sextant, no charts and hardly any food. Despite being sent to almost certain death, he successfully navigated for 48 days all the way to Kupang in the Dutch East Indies. And meanwhile, Fletcher Christian took the bounty off to look for a hiding place and he found Pitcairn Island. And to this day, all the people on Pitcairn are related to the bounty mutineers. Well, a lot of them are anyway. They've all got names like Christian and, uh, and Young. If I got back to tell the tale, bad tempered old fellow. <laughs> And if you're interested in the Mutiny on the Bounty, you can watch my award-winning film, Take Me to Pitcairn, in which I attempt to get to Pitcairn Island. Yeah. They've actually done some renovations since I made that film, and uh, now Captain Bly is in a beautiful courtyard next to John Tredescant, who was King Charles's gardener. He, that's the reason why they've got these pineapples on top of these kind of monuments at the end of the bridge, because John Tredescant was the person who brought the pineapple to the UK, and I think he also brought tulips and the plane tree, which is, um, I think those are plane trees over there. And that's a really beautiful Tudor arch gatehouse thing. And inside there, but they've got the gloves that were worn by King Charles I when he was executed. You can now go up this tower yeah. for a lovely view of Westminster. Yeah. Let's go check it out. How, how many steps is it there? 131, they are all medieval steps. Oh, how old is it, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, the medieval one is from the say, um, 13th century. Who's that calling now? Who's this jerk? No, I have not been injured at work. Yes, I need insurance. Oh, please insure this phone. Call ring again and maybe this poor dog will get a bone. A bone, this dog will get a bone. In fact, this was also the place where uh, Anne Boleyn confessed to uh, Thomas Cranmer before being executed for, I don't know, adultery or something. I think that those uh, where you can see the windows bricked in, that was because they actually did have window tax. I don't know how long ago that was. Do you know, Nick? No. They did, but there was definitely something called window tax and you'd be taxed for the amount of uh, amount of windows on your property. And so people decided to save money by bricking some of them in. I think some of them have been bricked in because maybe they've got staircases there now or something like that. Um, but some of them are legitimately to save money. I think there was a beard tax at one point in Britain. Yeah, there was definitely awesome. beard tax, yeah. They should bring that in again now. They should bring in beard tax in now. They'd, they'd make so much money in Hoxton. I mean, you know. <laughs> Oh, this building here, this is uh, number four, I think, Millbank. This is the Millbank Studios. 
where the BBC do their uh, reporting live from Westminster and all that. In fact, that's uh, quite often you see the reporters over there. Don't worry, carry on. So I'm not from the BBC <laughs> yet. One day. Yeah, though, this, is, this bit over here is, you know, when you see them standing outside Westminster doing their reporting. It's usually from this green here. Let's go and stand here and recreate some uh, political moment. Today in Westminster, Theresa May wore pink socks. But what exactly do pink socks represent? We'll find out after the break. Yeah, and it's usually about as interesting as that as well. <laughs> that over there, that's Richard the Lionheart. Richard the Lionheart, whose heart I claimed in another video is buried underneath All Hallows by the Tower Church. But it's only a legend that he's buried, it's buried there. He's not, it's actually in France. In fact, Richard the Lionheart spent more time outside England during his reign than, than in England. Yeah, he went over to uh, fight the Crusades, didn't he? He famously uh, slaughtered a whole load of prisoners. Like, he was proper badass. I mean, he ran his own army. He was at the head of his own army by the age of 16. I think he rebelled against his father twice. He is the 21st great, great uncle of Queen Elizabeth II. She must have also been related to Richard III. Do you think she was related to Richard III? She didn't go to his funeral, which I thought was a bit harsh, actually. When they, when they found him and they buried him, the Queen didn't show up. I would have. I mean, she was Queen. He was King. Anyway, I digress. I'm tired of Is it you want to read anything? Is it you want to read anything? Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my films, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Have a look at my website, jewelsguides.com, if you want a private guided tour of London. You can find out all about me. And you can even buy some tasteful Jules Guides merchandise. And uh, if you want, contribute uh, via PayPal or, or become my Patreon, as if you wanted to. Cheers.